Stream crossings on forest roads and skid trails pose the greatest risk to water quality compared to all other activities associated with timber harvesting. It is best to avoid crossing a stream if at all possible. However, if unavoidable, taking the extra time to walk the harvest area to assess the size and location of the stream crossing will help you determine the proper type of crossing to install. Time spent on proper crossing installation will be far less than time spent repairing or removing an improper crossing and will likely save you money in the long run. This video will discuss several types of acceptable stream crossings, including how to address crossing a state navigable water. We will also look at several situations to avoid and how to remediate those improper stream crossings. As always, if you are unsure of how to cross a stream, contact your local BMP forester. They are glad to assist you and ensure you are in compliance with all applicable best management practices. Be sure to check if the section of stream you need to cross is considered a state navigable water. In South Carolina, bridge construction across navigable waterways is under the jurisdiction of the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control. Anyone planning to construct a bridge across a navigable waterway must contact DHEC for permit application forms and technical design information. Before discussing the different types of stream crossings, let's go over a few general BMPs that apply to all stream crossings. Cross streams at right angles except where prevented by geologic features. Keep approaches to stream crossings as gentle a slope as practical. Use drainage structures such as turnouts or broad base dips on both sides of a crossing as needed to prevent road and ditch runoff from entering the stream. Stabilize disturbed soil around crossing soon after construction. Try to avoid using soil as fill material except when installing culverts. Allowing runoff from roadside ditches to flow directly into streams at the crossings and altering the flow of the stream. Now, let's look at the different types of stream crossings and when and where to use each type. Before just rolling a culvert into a stream, you need to take several factors into consideration, such as the depth and width of the stream and the size of the watershed above the stream crossing. If the stream is too wide or too deep, a culvert crossing may not be the best solution. Determining the size of the watershed will ensure the appropriate sized culvert will be used. Determining the size of a watershed can be easily done by using a topo map or online mapping software. Let's walk through the steps of determining the size of a watershed using a topo map. First, draw a circle at the point where you will install the stream crossing. Then put small X's at the high points along both sides of the watercourse working your way upstream toward the headwaters of the watershed. Starting at the circle that was made in step one, draw a line connecting the X's along one side of the watercourse. Continue the line until it passes around the head of the watershed and down the opposite side of the watercourse. Eventually it will connect with the circle from where you started. The area outlined is the watershed. This area can be measured using a dot grid. The dot grid is printed on a sheet of clear mylar and should be placed on top of the topo map. The user counts the number of dots that fall within the watershed and multiply by a factor to determine the area. If using computer mapping software, the steps used will be the same. However, the program should automatically calculate the area for you. Once you have determined the area of the watershed above the stream crossing, Refer to the table in your BMP manual to select the appropriate size culvert. Note the difference between permanent and temporary culvert sizes. Permanent culverts are sized for storm flows with 25 year recurrence intervals. Temporary culverts are sized for storm flows with only a two year recurrence interval. Remember, using two culverts that are half the size of the desired size culvert is not the same. For example, using two 30 inch culverts is not the same as using one 60 inch culvert due to friction loss. You would need to use two 
48 inch culverts to handle the same flow as one 60 inch culvert. Once you have determined the appropriate culvert to install, there are several things you want to keep in mind to ensure the culvert remains in place, functions properly, and does not blow out. Place a culvert on the grade of the existing stream channel. This allows for proper water flow and animal passage. Install culverts which are long enough to extend beyond the toe of the fill slopes. Often culverts are too short, causing one end to collapse and block the flow of water. Compact backfill material to prevent water from seeping around the culvert. Cover the culvert with enough fill to prevent damage by traffic, at least 12 inches or half the diameter of the culvert. If erosion is a problem, construct a head wall on the inlet side. And if the outlet is placed above the toe of the fill, install an apron of riprap at the outlet. And stabilize disturbed soil. Fords are an effective crossing method for forest roads on streams that have gentle approaches and shallow banks. Fords are suitable for vehicle traffic, but should not be used to skid logs across. To properly construct a ford, an excavator or traco should be used to dig out the stream bed 8 to 12 inches below grade. That area should then be filled back in with large stone to just below the natural level of the stream bed. Smaller rocks should then be placed on top of the large stones to bring the top of the ford crossing up to the natural level of the stream bed. The approaches on both sides of the stream should then be stabilized with rock to prevent erosion and minimize the amount of sediment entering the stream. Bridges are usually the best stream crossing method, especially when crossing a wider stream. Bridge crossings are the cleanest type of stream crossing, resulting in less sediment introduction into the stream. Steel bridge mats are usually four to five feet wide, can range from 20 to 50 feet in length, and can be easily placed across the stream with a skitter or track machine. When using steel bridge mats, it is important to avoid leaving a gap between the spans where sediment and debris can be introduced into the stream channel. When the stream crossing is no longer needed, the bridge mat can be removed, placed on a trailer, and transported to the next harvest, resulting in less cleanup than other types of stream crossings. Log stringer bridges can also be used to cross wider stream sections and are commonly used on shovel roads. A large, merchantable log should be laid parallel to the stream channel on each bank to act as a bulkhead. Then, other large merchantable logs should be laid perpendicular to the stream, resting on the first two logs. Soil should never be placed over the top of the stringer bridge. All woody material must be removed from the stream when the crossing is no longer needed. A more permanent bridge option is to use a flatbed truck trailer or a retired rail car. Woody fill or debris crossings are the most commonly used type of stream crossing, but is often used improperly. Woody material may be used as fill to protect stream banks and bottoms in crossing small, intermittent, and ephemeral streams with well-defined channels. These temporary crossings can be used if soil is not introduced into the stream with the woody fill. Soil blocks a pore space among the woody debris, impeding drainage and increasing the amount of sediment in the water course the stream flow is not blocked, or if woody material that restricts flow of water is removed. This is an example of a debris crossing gone bad. Several things went wrong in this situation. First, logging continued after several days of heavy rain. It may have been best to move to another track until this one dried up. Secondly, the type of crossing installed was not the best fit for this site. A debris crossing was used where steel bridge mats would have been a better fit had they been available. Even so, the debris crossing should have been built with large merchantable timber rather than tops and debris. 
Usually the crossing is easier to remove when merchantable timber is used and the logger is more likely to retrieve the wood if it has value. Lastly, the operator failed to stabilize the steep approaches to the stream crossing, which greatly increased the amount of sediment that washed into this intermittent stream. We hope this video has provided useful information about the various types of stream crossings and where to use each type. As always, if you have questions about stream crossings, please contact the appropriate BMP forester. Remember, clean water flows from healthy forests. Use best management practices.